What's up, guys? Welcome into another episode of Football and Random Things. I'm Connor Ferguson here with Jeff Woody, Colin Newell. Uh, real quick, before we get started, presented today by Wiffles Hybrid, the greatest. Presented every day That's by right. Wiffles Hybrid. Every episode. The greatest independent company in the world. Even better than the one we work for. Even better. Take that, Williams. <laughs> <laughs> He's been getting too lippy with me lately, so I got it. Snap back. Yeah, yeah, up the ante on the ads. But appreciate Wiffles for uh, presenting us uh, today. Colin making your triumphant return. I am back from work trip. You missed it. We we did a storm shelter thing on the last episode and I was looking for random things yeah. last night. And by that, I just mean I was on TikTok. I scrolled for like an hour and a half. It, I saw two videos that were not Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey related. It's it's the talk of the world right now, man. You can't get away from it from anybody. What's the Sports deal, Aiden? Fans or... Aiden's a big Swifty. Why do you guys do you know mean, every... What's the deal? I, I don't... I, she... Taylor what do you want to know? I, Exactly. That's <laughs> the scary part is I think I could come up with any question and you would know. I'm pretty confident I don't know. There'd be a Taylor Swift on, yeah. Reddit like with a thirteen page thread that's explaining the entire reason that Taylor likes to wear sandals to football games or something. I'm not a Reddit guy, but I am about as deep into Taylor Swift Twitter as you can be. So what do you know about the date? What's the details? So uh Travis bought out the entire restaurant and like Travis did it. not Taylor? Correct, yeah. Because hmm. he's a gentleman. Well, Taylor might he's, have more money. He's also got a <laughs> might. No, for sure does. <laughs> uh, I. It's funny because the <laughs> there's some somebody said something about like Kansas City does does not have the infrastructure to handle this development. <laughs> Which hey, I don't think any city does. No, no, it absolutely does not. But hey, I mean, good for, good for them. Either way, in three months, you're going to have a song written about you, buddy. Like, either way, good or bad, it's going to be a song. Have you seen, like, the Twitter video of, like, her, like, in the stands or whatever? And they're like, yeah, I she don't cussed. really know him or whatever like that. But Oh, man. I don't I don't think I saw that one with you. No, I haven't. Yeah, maybe it was just a bad AI. My, like, fa- read, but. my favorite one is there's a conspiracy that she's doing all this to break up with him right before the Super Bowl because she's Ooh. a big Eagles fan. <laughs> objectively would be really funny. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an incredible. I also saw a picture of uh, uh, not Travis Kelsey, but Jason Kelsey standing next to DeAndre Swift. And we're like, wait, these two are together? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should talk football. Thanks for wearing your Oklahoma State orange. It's, uh, it's a victory orange. It's a victory, victory orange. orange? Yeah, it's it's a branding. It's I branding. like it. It's not bad at all. I accidentally wore a black and orange shirt. Tuesday, or uh, Saturday in the press mm, box. And that was uh, that was a mistake. Chilly. But yeah, Iowa State won, so all this is funny. Like right, as opposed exactly. to if Iowa State managed to somehow lose oh, that someone, game, someone snapped a photo of it and yeah, tweeted, Look you would have lost, <laughs> yeah, exactly. lost your press pass. Yeah, you lost your press pass. Yeah, yeah. I've 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 done. I made that mistake before. I wore what I thought was a uh, yellowish orange, but it's more orange yellow to an Oklahoma State game. Got called out in the stands. Not great. Uh, anyway, I, points are fun, guys. Yes. Ah, how about that? Throwing Man. the ball down the field, getting a lot of guys involved. A couple of receivers can make a big plays. No more sacks this week. I mean, so one on the season, four games, right? Yeah, yeah four games, one sack. That's, uh, that's that might be my favorite stat of the year. And I know I bring up favorites on the show, and it's usually the same thing. But other than like punts returned, yeah. period, like love that one. But the fact that the line, objectively, I think we could say, doesn't look up to par for a Big Twelve offensive line right now. It looks like that, yet Rocco has still managed, and the linemen, at least with some of their pass blocking, have been able to protect him completely for three out of the four games. Yeah, I think think our pass pro has looked pretty solid. I mean, there's been a couple times where Rocco's definitely kept himself clean and made things right, but um, prior to this game, we hadn't thrown the ball downfield a ton, which certainly helps out quick passes. Uh, One for Rocco's confidence and the offensive line confidence. Just like anything, when you're a confident player, you're going to play better. So if you get a little bit of confidence going, um, you, you don't give up those sacks. You're, you're keeping the quarterback clean. Um, you're certainly going to – Brock is going to be more confident because he feels he can protect himself in the pocket. But um, that offensive line also is going to continue to gel here. I'm pretty confident about that. Yeah, and to put 37 points up, Aiden looked at me, and I like to joke and hyperbolize when I'm watching a football game. So Oklahoma State scored, and I just looked at Aiden and said season's over. That's it. <laughs> that uh, no more points the rest of the year. And he well, he asked me. He goes, "Do you think they can score eight points?" And I go, "The fact that this is a question we're even talking about, jokingly or not, is really bad." But I think they proved us very wrong that they can score thirty-seven. Well, and it was thirty-four. But 34. Um, the you. either way, the so the thing that that the Iowa State offense did a lot better 
So there's two things that, and we talked about this on Kicking It. We recorded it yesterday. Kicking It will come out after this, but uh, so forgive me for the re- little bit of redundancy. But there's two things that can be true at the same time. One is that schematically, Iowa State had come into the game basically with the back half of last year and the first three games of this year showing what they wanted to do and not really deviating from that. So, for example, if you have a down tight end, meaning a guy's hand on the ground right next to the tackle to the left side, then you have a tight end that is off to the right side. It means we're probably going to run the ball to that down tight end and we're going to have that off tight end run and try and lead block form. We've shown that basically like a front like that is going to lead to a run play to one side. Well, if you if I know that and I'm just watching it one time without game film, damn sure that every opponent knows that. And so this is the first time that they have changed. They have gone against their tendencies substantially in this game. The first half, I think they were still trying to figure out where they wanted to actually go with it. By the time they got through middle of the second quarter, a couple drives in the third were st- stalled a little bit, but ended up breaking their own tendencies by the end of the game, which led to a whole lot of good stuff. So thing number one that can be true at the same time is that the running game still isn't where it needs to be. The effectiveness and the execution of the blocking schemes and the running back tracks. That's why Eli Sanders was substantially better uh, than most of the other backs is because he was way more aggressive. Well, and another thing we'll get to in a second. Uh, but running game's still not great. Tight ends aren't blocking with the same physicality they need to. Offensive line, um, I, for my money, they're just, they, they're, they're not sure where they're supposed to be going Like a lot of the time. It feels like they're not still like, on the same page with each other. Um, But the second thing that can be true, so running game, not where you want it. Uh, The other thing that can be true is that the defensive scheme is preventing you from being successful just generally because of those tendencies. So one of those things changed, which made the other thing a little bit easier. By the time the game got done, if we're talking about that down tight end to the left and an off tight end to the right, what would they do on that one? They'd, They'd play action the run to that side and scoot out the backside Well, by that time, because they'd never shown that action before, every backside defender just totally collapsed down to the to the front. And then you could just dump it off to Easton Dean or Abu Sama or somebody for a play action to move it. Second thing and the other thing that Oklahoma State was doing is that their safeties were super aggressive because we'd never shown that we're going to play action and throw it back behind anybody. By breaking that tendency, it forced the safeties to play back, which made the run game easier, which made everything happen. Run game still not where you want it. But by breaking their own tendencies and switching kind of problem two, you're able to hopefully address problem one. So I don't know. I was curious to get Colin's take on offensive, like why the offensive line hasn't, because like like I said, from my perspective, they're just not sure where they're at. But I don't. I never played the position, so I don't know if don't know if that's necessarily true. Yeah, I think that there's a couple things that go to it. It's you you know you're you're one or the other. You're run the ball, set up the pass, or you set up the pass and then run the ball. Um, and I, I think that we haven't really shown to throw downfield much until this game. Um, we've had a couple nice nice balls downfield, but it hasn't been consistent um, until this game. So we really started to show that, hey, we're going to throw the ball down the field. Hey, they start to change their defense a little bit, make adjustments, and then they have to respect the pass downfield. Well, what that does is that opens up the box. And then instead of being outnumbered, outplayed, whatever like that, guys, when, when they're run blocking every time, they can just sit and hold the gap. But when they're having to pass rush and then they have to think, hey, are we going to run here or not? Um, it, it certainly changes the defense's thought process, linebackers, um, defensive linemen. Um, and I, I think we just got a little bit off of the uh, the target there and, and didn't maybe have some of those same tendencies that you kind of had talked about, which then makes the job a little bit easier for everybody. The, the, and, and it opens up the opportunity for them to to be able to go be physical. And, and having um, Eli Sanders go out there and hit some holes as quick as he did with, with vision – not saying that the offensive line hasn't made any holes this year by any means. So that was good to see that, hey, these holes were actually being hit, giving them confidence. Let's let's get a little confidence behind them. Obviously, Campbell's called them out, so they know that they have to be better. Um, and, and just kind of seeing how that they reacted. And, you know, we we did run the ball a little bit in the second half, and I think that we'll continue to build on that as we continue to, to develop the offense and um, Rocco continues to throw the ball around here. Yeah, I thought that, like, schematically, one of the things that helped is talking about, when you're saying, like, lightening up the box. Well, for most most of our listeners probably know what that is, but, like, the box is 
essentially from tight end to tight end on the offense and then like five to seven yards into the defensive side like that is literally just draw a box who's in there and there are some people like i don't know if you call them edit like a, a box plus or whatever a mm-hmm. plus defender where if they're sort of outside that little box but their responsibility like iowa state has they're filling. they're filling so like you can sort of include those guys in the count well one of the things that oklahoma state did early in the game and i thought this was an exceptionally well called game by Shieldhouse, really well done because of this which is uh, Oklahoma State plays like a poor man's version of Iowa State's defense where it's three down they have three linebackers and they have five secondary players and their middle safety is like a linebacker he's like six four like 220 well he was playing at like seven and a half eight yards most of the time and was filling on an interior gap whether it's an a or a b gap player maybe I don't know somewhere somewhere in between and even if he doesn't have a gap responsibility if he, he if he sees run he is triggering downhill really really hard so by first couple you know quarter and a half when they're trying to run the ball it's not really working even whether it's a condensed formation with tight ends or not you have let's say you have seven in the box and it looks like it's theoretically a run box and you run into that well that guy's triggering making it eight you don't have enough guys to block him so even if everybody's accounted for that guy being unblocked is either going to throw off a lineman and they're going to try and come off and pick him up but then leave the responsibility they should have or he's going to be running cause a running back to stop so even if he doesn't make the tackle running back is now having to move somewhere else well where were the big pass plays that Iowa State had? It was a play action or it was right over the middle. It was that safety commits to the run and you throw it right where he was. That Daniel Jackson touchdown on fourth down. Jalen Knoll's first big play. Uh, Easton Dean had like a 15 or an 18 yard catch in the red zone, which was an, on an RPO. That guy triggers down, throw it right to where he was. By the time the second half, mid, really middle of the third quarter on, by the time that happened and Iowa State was actually able to get a run game going because that guy had to play at 12 yards. He had to, that safety had to play safety. He couldn't play linebackers. So you couldn't run three defensive linemen and really four linebackers plus some guys. They actually had to back up. And so Shieldhouse taking, looking at this defense specifically and saying, what, do, what are you doing to us? How can we then change that? pull that safety back out of the box by actually throwing it on first down, throwing it on play action, throwing it right to where he was. That made it so there wasn't that extra random person that's just in the box that you can't do anything with. They were then actually able to run the ball. It makes their lives substantially easier. So you're saying the pass to open up the run, yep. that's what they did in that in the by the second half. And it could have been vice versa, where if, hey, he's playing deep, hey, we run the ball, and then all of a sudden he starts to play in like he started the game with, and then dump it in and he's gonna have to start adjusting so and i think that was a good breakdown of why it's not just as simple as air it out you yeah know, let rocco throw the ball uh there's schematic things that went into getting those guys so wide open and rocco's just the stereotypical freshman year brock purdy where it's like yeah don't mess up go in there don't make a mistake don't make stupid Man, turnovers he's, he's and- playing outstanding but i don't think people understand like from a mechanics standpoint, and I'm I I didn't I played quarterback in eighth grade, so I'm not talking about like pure like I understand quarterback mechanics, but understanding like what is the point of a play, the like the big the one that comes to mind is that like the uh, touchdown that he threw, or not touchdown the uh, the yeah the, the Daniel Jackson's touchdown, mm-hmm. the one where he throws it to it's a post to the left or a corner to the left, excuse me. There was pressure like that wasn't a, a super clean look, but he understands. This ball, where it needs to go is to the left sideline because of where the route is designed to go. I need to make sure that I buy myself time so I can get the ball to the left sideline. The throw is easier when in, if I float from the pocket, if I float to the right, I'm now having to, to throw over the receiver's head because I'm now like he's running at an angle to the pylon. If I get behind that line, I have to throw it over his head. So if there's pressure, I can't float to the right because I know where the route concept is going to have to be. So if I throw it to the left, it's a little bit more of a horizontal angle. I can get Daniel Jackson to actually see it. So if there's pressure, I'm bleeding to the left to get him that ball. The understanding of the play, yes, it was a great pass. Yes, it was a great catch. And Daniel Jackson dusted the dude dude on the line or off the line of scrimmage. But still, understanding where you have to move, where is your where is the actual point of the play to drift to that and hit that corner it's not as simple as stand catch throw it's understanding the whole point of the play and like you're saying he's kept himself clean that's the kind of stuff that keeps himself clean is understanding where the play needs to go and getting to a safe spot to execute the play and not taking a hit by the way uh Rocco Beck just won the Sean Alexander freshman of the week award 
I'm not surprised. I thought he played phenomenal. I think he's played well all Colin, season. why did you take that in stride as if you've heard of that award before? Where is Sean before? Alexander? I have never heard of it, <laughs> but I'm not school? surprised. It's a, freshman, it's a freshman of the week award, man. Where he Sean played Alex, great. Seahawks legend. Where did he end up going to school? Where, where is Sean Alexander? Did he go to Oklahoma? That feels like an Oklahoma guy. Only Aiden knew Sean Alabama. Alexander. What? Alabama. Alabama? Alabama. Yeah, definitely Sean Alexander. That Big ruins 20. Sean Alexander for me. I used to like that guy a lot more. I, it was, I guess it was, it was old pre Alabama. Yeah. pre saving Anyway. Yeah. No, I, I mean, he's, he's played phenomenal. I think he's done a great job of not only, like like you've said, keeping himself clean in certain situations, but knowing what to do, doing it in a timely manner. Hey, I will throw the ball away here. I'm not going to try to make something happen downfield because there's pressure and I just want a big play. Um, hey, live another down and and let's keep this ball in our possession. There was a, there's an expression that Herman used, which was, you, you can never go broke taking a profit, which is if you make it like a lot of the air raid stuff and that's just I, I hope fans kind of keep this in mind too like just run the damn ball or whatever like be able to run the ball yes true but second and seven or is better than second and ten. Second and three is second and three regardless of how you get there and so if on there's there's some rpos or whatever and there are times when like if perhaps he wants to hang on to it try and make a huge play like in his gut maybe he wants to but let's throw a hitch to Jalen Noel or you know whomever and Dimitri Stanley and get it catch tackle, but now it's second and four. Mm -hmm. Cool. Second and four is way better than second and 10. It's way better than second and 14. Yeah. Keep yourself on rhythm. And that's like the little things that Rocco's doing really well is just staying on rhythm. You can never, you can't go broke taking a profit. Advance the ball down the field. Second eight's better than second and 10. Third and four is better than third and nine. Like just advance the ball down the field, taking positive plays wherever you can get them. I thought it was really cool to see Daniel Jackson go out there and play a great game, too. I remember early in his career, freshman year, he he broke his foot and had some problems with that. But um, really talented guy, really good dude. And uh, seeing him go out there and execute and, and play some high-level football, couple, catch a couple touchdowns is, is huge for Iowa State and for himself as well. He has a great story. I gave Rob the uh, – he talked a little bit about it, but he was in a car accident his junior year of high school. Uh, but so many injuries. One doctor told me he wouldn't play football again. But So Rob is going to write a big feature story on that at some point. I had a question I wanted to pose to you guys. So Eli Sanders obviously still looked good Saturday. The running attack is still not where you want it to be. If I'm a defense going up against Iowa State, what is stopping me? I go, I go look up their average yards per rush, and it's 2.2 from this week, 1.7 the week before. What is stopping me from playing a pass-heavy defense? Because that's the only reason I think they're going to move the ball or only method they're going to use to get the ball downfield. Well, I, I'm, they're probably going to. I think that, that uh, that's going to start. I'm curious to see what Oklahoma does because up until this Oklahoma State game, there was nothing to make teams respect the fact that Iowa State could or would throw the ball down the field. Uh, but now that they actually have, you're going to that start to see that. Now, this is the I know that you know, and you know that I know, and I know that you know, and that's that back and forth. Iowa State is likely going to see a softer softer shell. You're not going to have that, that safety or that outside linebacker, the nickel, just screaming in to play the run because if you scream in to play the run, Rock has shown the ability, and, and the receivers and the tight ends have shown the ability to find open space from wherever that left and hit it. So they're going to have to play a little bit more pass heavy. Iowa State hasn't seen that. Like, we don't know what that's going to look like, except like the middle part of the fourth quarter was the only time that we actually saw that defense being run. And Iowa State was able to run the ball out of those sets. So what's stopping you from running a pass heavy defensive scheme? Nothing. And I bet you're going to see that from Oklahoma. But now it's on Iowa State to be able for the first time all season, really the second time again, one and a half quarters, maybe uh, for to actually execute in the run game to the point where you then have to draw that person back up and you can start screwing with the safeties and linebackers when you can execute on both sides of that in the box, out of the box, running the ball, throwing the ball. Like that is a, you're likely going to see that on Saturday. Yeah, I think, I think you're, you're spot on there. I think that every coach since the beginning of time has said, how do you want a football game on defense? You stop the run. Um, I hired John Haycock. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's my answer. There you go. I, I just think that they're they're gonna have to commit to still stopping the run to some point. Obviously, you know it, it maybe it's still gonna probably be more of a pass, you know, pass pass heavy defense and stuff like that. But um, I just think that they're they're 
they still know in the back of their head for them to win this football game. If the Iowa State's offensive line can get rolling, if those running backs can see some gas, kind of like that third, fourth quarter there, that's still a respectable, hey, we have to go out there and we have to we have to be ready to stop the run. So I, I completely think that they're going to probably commit early on to stop the run, but know that, hey, Rocco just went out there and did sling it. We're going to have to be able to know that, hey, this team is different after last week than what they've been the previous three games and that they will throw the ball downfield. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, another thing is the defense obviously gave up the most points they have all season. It's, I guess, technically or objectively the worst they've looked. But I think part of that is Mike Gundy just seems to have Iowa State's number when it comes to getting these games into high-scoring shootouts, whether they have a good defense or not. I think we we did the math. We didn't actually get to this because actually on kicking it, there was a fire alarm that uh, ended ended the recording early. You might be able to hear it. It's a little Easter egg at the very at the very end. I don't know if, <laughs> if Aid was able to get that out. Um, but we didn't really get into the defense as much. But we did some math. If you subtract the two big plays that Oklahoma State had. It was the the when they motioned the the running back out and threw a deep ball on Bacon. Uh and then the other one which is the big run play, at 71 yards and 60 yards respectively. Oklahoma State only averaged 3.9 per play. So outside of those two, they actually played a pretty good game and so now if you're looking at those two drives, you got to tip your cap to Mike Gundy. Now granted, it would help if Malik Verdun was in. Like Ben Nickel is good and he is freaking effort everywhere but took a couple wrong angles and then but the other thing is that Gundy did a really good job of understanding what Iowa State was doing to them and then using that against Iowa State so like the big run play Iowa State's defense plays they stop the run in a way that's different than most other places stop the run your contained defender is usually a corner like that corner is going to be the one that has to turn everything back because the safeties tend to run the alley like they're going to be somewhere between where the tight end and the slot receiver is. If they can, if they get there first, they're going to play contained, but ultimately corners are the ones that have to turn it back to help because one of those, somebody else on the field is going to do it. Well, Gundine saw that Iowa state was playing a lot more man in the first part of the game because they trusted that purchase and Tampa would be able to match up with the wide receivers. And rather than trying to block TJ Tampa on that big run play, they just had their wide receiver run a glance. So it's like a really shallow slant and just run Tampa out of the way and by the time TJ saw that it was a run, he was already nine yards inside. You have a fast running back, breaks that angle. Nickel didn't quite take the right angle to cut it off and then ended up running him down, which fast, fast. <laughs> Damn, that was walked down a running back that was running fast. But either way, so Gundy understanding that Iowa State was playing man, you're going to run a slant instead of trying to block him, run your cornerback in. Now there is no edge. Run to the outside, block it up pretty well on the inside. Safety takes a wrong angle. Boom, it's gone. Well, what didn't happen the rest of the game? That, because Iowa State recognized that and made an adjustment. Then the other one was, uh, I mean, every defense has a weakness, no matter what it is. If you're playing cover four, it's shallow underneath. If you're playing cover one, you have a, a, the risk of getting beat. Well, the way that Iowa State played that defense when they motioned the wide receiver out, one, I think Jeremiah Cooper, or there's two people covering one on the other one, so I think Cooper was probably in the wrong or a miscommunication. But you got one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. At some point, that's going to happen, and you kind of just dare the opposing offense to not take advantage of the one thing that your defense is susceptible to, and they took advantage of it. So tip your cap. Good job. Mm -hmm. Like, those are two you formationed, you play, you formation and play called, and it made adjustments to what Iowa State was doing. Congratulations. Those adjustments got essentially capped from that point, and they only scored one more play, and that was it, or one more touchdown, and that was in a scramble situation two minute drill type deal with a great pass from Bowman. So like it wasn't great by the defense and obviously they gave up way more yards, but the two big plays that caused most of the damage were Gundy really calling, getting in a good spot, getting in a good spot, like tip your cap, Mike Gundy. Good job. Yeah. I got really excited for uh, the year 2034 or so on Saturday, looking at Alan Bowman and watching him play. He's definitely going to be like, Hey, you remember that guy? Yeah. He, he played college football. Uh, what? What? Do you get what I'm saying? No. You just no. name a random athlete from oh. college like years ago. You just, hey, remember that guy? Landry Jones? You haven't. He, no, I've yeah, not. Landry, that perfect okay, example. So you just, you just, it, that's what guys do, Jeff. You I don't. Go and sit in a circle a, in your friends and you just name people that used to play football. <laughs> that you is not a this? thing. I am not the crazy I've, one in the room here. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I've, uh, I've actually, I actually have to do stuff with my day. <laughs> we don't. I get work. what you're saying. Yeah. But I don't know if he'll be the one that comes up to like yeah. top of mind. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, it's supposed to be like a, oh, yeah, yeah, that guy existed. 
Okay. I'm saying he he didn't he did not wow me Saturday is kind of what I was saying for where he's been and the hype yeah. around yes. him. He didn't have a game that really impressed me at all, and I was surprised that they've been playing three quarterbacks. I was surprised we didn't see any of the he other played two. the whole game. Yeah. Yeah. You? Uh, I mean, he, he played fine. Is Iowa State's got a good defense? Like, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> they still played well. Like, and, yeah, there yeah. was two busted plays, and actually, the one that they actually scored the touchdown on right after that big run, it was the same thing. They ran a slant yeah. the other side. It was Miles Purchase was the one that got drawn in. Rather than blocking the corners on that drive, they had the receivers run a slant. If you recognize man, run inside. Don't even try and block anybody. Run like it's a route. Bring the corner with you. Bowman popped out. There's no contain. Back to back plays. Same exact thing. All right, you go to the sideline. Haycock goes, all right, scrap that. Do something different. Make an adjustment. Never happens again. And that is something that he is so good at doing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Bowman didn't play awesome. He made a couple really nice throws. That touchdown to the running back, awesome. That The other touchdown to the tight end, like at the very end of the game, hell of a throw. But he's playing a really good defense. Like, I mean, not – I thought Bowman was fine. It was, wasn't anything outstanding. But and the defense, because it wasn't their best, but it also wasn't – the worst it, it wasn't a, it's never as good as it looks and it's never as bad as it looks a couple big plays couple schematic mistakes your mistatic schematic losses gundy wins that matchup one or two times erase those in it all as well and we get two takeaways from bowman so yeah, yeah that's a good so i was gonna ask you guys too like we've been waiting for this defense to force more, more turnovers even when they're playing near perfect games i asked uh will mclaughlin and he was like yeah, number one thing we have to do is get more turnovers, get more takeaways, figure out a way to do it one way or the other. And he said that's the number one thing they got to do. So it's good to see him get two this week. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, anytime you get that extra opportunity in the game where, you know, you end up with halfway decent field position and, and it's just a little jump. It's like, hey, normally, you know, if it's a punt or a touchdown or something, field goal that, that changes possession. When you get that, it's, hey, it's a little bit of excitement. We get it. This is an extra opportunity. Let's go do something with it. Let's take a shot. Let's do something like that. And and we certainly uh, certainly won the game and helped out. You want to uh, talk Oklahoma first, or should I do my kind of random thing in the middle? Let's let's switch it up. Let's go random thing. What do you got? Well, I'm very curious. Colin, the first time we met, I was wearing a sprint car shirt, and the second time, and the third time. So I told them I'd start <laughs> theming my sprint car shirts that I wear here, and they played Thunderstruck. So I got my Carson Macedo. ACDC shirt on so I want to know what you guys thought of the intro song and if you had full creative control what would your intro be oh man I I don't I wasn't there for it we I got would up, put we a, got up a montage little bit late. of just Jeff's run against Oklahoma State That'd put a lot of people up. but only yeah. only if Oklahoma State it's is just, playing it's, just every, yeah, it's <laughs> every angle of that just as a middle finger uh I don't know I wasn't there for it so no comment Thunderstruck is a classic song. I mean, if you can't get fired up at Thunderstruck, I don't know what uh, what will fire it a is, person up. A lot up. of people told me they, they didn't think they played it out too long. And obviously, it's cooler when you have a tradition. But at this point, I'm just like, we're trying to find go something. try anything outside the box and see which one catches on I, first. So here's my thing. I legitimately feel like the biggest band out of the state of Iowa is Slipknot. At some, there's got to be some intro in there somewhere that is sort of like it's your thing. I need it's from Iowa. I you need can have Slipknot on the field as Sai is coming out with the pyro flame throwing. <laughs> there you cart. go. So there's some type of. I don't know if it's necessarily kid friendly. I don't think the parents are going to love the fact that Slipknot's playing. Uh, but that's what I would like. I'm also I. Uh, that's the kind of stuff. I don't know what you listen to before the game, like in your like what you had in your AirPods or any headphones. Uh, but when I was playing running back, it was a lot more like hip hop, a lot more like I got to, you know, stay loose, just kind of whatever. But when I was playing more fullback H back straight metal, cause you're running into a, a brick wall, you're going to war 500 times. So I, I was personally listening to Slipknot prior to games. So selfishly it's Iowa. I did it. That's my pick. When we played hockey, there was always like songs that the team would get excited around and there'd be like post game locker room celebrations. And that would kind of change every year. I think it'd be cool to just have the team pick something like that for every season. Um, the other favorite thing is if the other team was in the vents, we'd play, if they could hear the music we were playing, we'd Blair Taylor Swift, Justin Bieber, whatever the softest songs we could think of like back to back, just to screw with people. What would you, what would, what would be your pick for the run? Honestly, like, man, I'm, I'm kind of weird. Like, 
I would, I, first of all, like, I wouldn't have music in really. I would just try to, like, take it all in, enjoy the moment, stuff like that. But it would just be whatever's on in the locker room, and that can't be played over the speakers. So <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's like, you know, it, it's certainly, certainly you know, uh, a situation where whatever's going to get people hyped up, but they can't play that over the speaker. So it's got to really, it's it's got to be what the fans like and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, if players can't get up and get excited to go out there running through fire, like, then we've missed the point. Uh-huh. Stick up to me for my friends from when I was in college and I was one of the younger kids in the fraternity. So we'd have to go save seats in the student section. You're there like an hour and a half before the game starts. You guys used to warm up to like sitting on a beach country music every game. Yeah. I feel, uh, yeah. I, did I you know. enjoy that or did you just not notice? I just You're didn't. Just I honestly ready. like, I like music. I was like the only one in the stands that was getting along to it. They yeah. play Toes by Zach Brown Man. Yeah. I could get down like, How that. do you know this song? And I'm like, how do you guys like, have not heard this but there's definitely a couple songs that like if i hear like it's still like it's like oh that song got played before every single game like it just fires you up so i feel like that's like definitely for for the players where it's like hey you hear the music in there that you really like and that you really get down to and um at that point it's just like hey you're going to play football adrenaline's already run through your body but definitely for the fan experience it's it's huge for sure and we need to figure out a way to uh, beef it up and make it really elite you guys are not the people to ask if we're good yeah though. you're not paying it <laughs> when you're on the field you're not paying near any attention to it yeah and i mean shit i went out to smoke on the water for five years so there's anything's better than that i do feel like that the atmosphere like i don't know like i remember some night games when like the phones come out like stuff like that you're like dang that's cool or juicy wig like things like that those are really cool cool experiences but uh we um, just we just need a hammer hammer song for the intro Hammer song. something, come up with it. Yeah, we'll we'll brainstorm and get back to you guys. How about <laughs> that? Uh, no, but so in a, in a way that Mike Gundy usually coaches pretty well against Iowa State's defense, and probably this is far less or so. But since he's gotten here, Matt Campbell has something in his back pocket for Oklahoma almost every season. It's really impressive, like how different. And I get the programs are in different spots, but. I would say had no success against Oklahoma until Campbell got here. Well, I think it's probably different. The, the biggest thing, I don't think there's any X's and O's. I think it's a fact of like, we belong here. Like, cause I would, and speaking for when we were there, I mean, I obviously you're never going into any game expecting to lose, but when you watch film and the other team is substantially better than the other teams that you've played, you recognize that like my margin for error here is smaller, which makes you play a little bit tighter, which is why we got buried at Oklahoma pretty much every time we went down there. But letting what Campbell's done, I think what he, it's not like Oklahoma was better then than they are now. They're actually probably worse. They're better now than they were then. But I think the, the ability for Campbell to be able to get guys to relax when you go there of not saying like, yeah, they're good, but so is everybody else we play. Who cares? And getting on the field and having confidence, that, not necessarily confidence. It's, it's the opposite of that. It's relaxing to the point where you don't feel like you have to play tight. Because that's what, to me, that's the problem. When you play a team that is, quote, more talented, they're not that much better. I mean, mm-hmm. no team that we played or that you played was really that much better than anybody else. It's just that you can relax and play normal, confident, just go make a mistake. And if you make a mistake, big deal, that type of thing. So Campbell's been able to get the team to believe a lot more that you don't have to play perfect to win the game, which has led to Iowa State playing better as opposed to this is the one we have to be perfect and whatever. So I think that's the biggest difference is that it's it's Oklahoma, but take the logo off the helmet. They're just another set of 11 dudes. Yeah, I think I think one thing that I always took away from Coach Campbell is he just knew how to get people motivated. He knew how to bring people together. And, and, and the whole situation is, yeah, Oklahoma's great players, great players. They have unbelievable talent. They have dudes drafted every year. They, they're they splattered all over the NFL. Um, but, but what Iowa State is is we're a bunch of dudes that come together and we play for each other. And it, it really becomes the battle of, hey, dudes together, like what's going what's gonna to be, what's going to win a football game? And, and we've played them close because it's been like, hey, how can we get dudes as close together as we can and like playing for each other? And at the end of the day, like when it's, when you're playing for your brother, you're playing for whatever, like you're going to feel that like, hey, like I'm going to do the little bit extra here. Not that you don't on every play, but like you feel the, hey, we got to go out there and execute every single play, and we got to do it together. So um, I I just think he does a great job of of every week, but he has a different message kind of every week. But overall, it's it's a consistent message. Um, And being able to just be there for each other. You know, like what he said, it's it's 
Oklahoma, you take their their logo off, and it's another team. So now we can go out there and beat them. There's no Baker Mayfield voodoo doll in his office. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Man, oh man, not that I've ever I was, seen. I was hoping it would be as simple as that. Yeah. Like, it's just something he've, he's done since Kyle Kemp went in there and Joel Lanning. And I don't know. It's a, it's a weird, just like Oklahoma State has been a weird series, like that series, Iowa State OU has been just Quick close competitive. Games. Yeah. yeah. And I think it might be 3 2 Oklahoma. In the last five? Yeah. yeah. It was, it was, it, last year it was two. Two and two in the years prior, because 2020 and then 2017, and then didn't, I think there was the short, whatever it was. Yeah, um, they, and 2020 was the one where they painted the, not, the field wasn't black, but like the logo and coloring of where you see Iowa State on the field today. And that was, was black and That white. was Kinney's big kick return. Yeah. That flipped the momentum. That was cool. I would like to see them paint paint that again but i uh i don't know who the attention detail was behind on that and where if they're still here or not so yeah there's so much like weird stuff that happens like that well it's so like, like the uniform thing the guy that was really passionate in creating those reveal videos on like wednesday at noon i think they would post them and it, there'd be a new 20 second video with a new song and whatever uniform they were gonna wear on saturday it would come out on wednesday and it was like something to kind of look forward to and people want it back but the guy who's really passionate about creating those and making those moved on yeah. to a different job. Yeah. And then the other guy that was tweeting the pictures of, hey, here's what we're wearing, he moved on to another job. So it's like, and they're, it's promotionary jobs. It's not like they hated Iowa State and got yeah. out. Yeah. Um, I think one's in the NFL. For, I just don't know where they went, so I, I can't tell you for sure. But there's a lot of things like that that are like really cool that you hope the next person would pick up, but you also have to have a lot of passion to just, hey, here's some extra stuff on top of this job description you're starting. Yeah. So. I don't know. I, either way, like, the thing that I'm interested in seeing, to get back to the game itself, yeah. the thing that I'm interested in seeing is uh, defensively, I think Iowa State, like I said, they, they played, it was a fine game. I think it wasn't perfect, but like I said, takeaway two plays, it actually was, you know, 3.9 per play. Not bad. Like, it's pretty good. Uh, but. That I don't have much concern with. I mean, the the way that Dylan Gabriel plays as an efficient quarterback, kind of dink and dug up and down the field, will probably have a little bit of success against this team because the what, how you beat Iowa State is five yard passes fourteen times. That's how you beat Iowa State, and there that, that offense is set up to do that. But still, a bunch of college kids, they're probably going to screw up at some point and take advantage of those screw ups. What I'm interested in seeing is Iowa State can they replicate the set the success they had in the passing game next week as they did against Oklahoma State because if you are able to do that everything becomes easier mm -hmm. the second thing I'm interested in seeing is how Oklahoma takes the Oklahoma State game on film and what do they do with it because do they say is this a blip are they probably not going to continue doing this or are they going to try and lean hard into this is a lot of RPOs a lot of play action a lot of uh it wasn't like Rocco was throwing it 70 yards down the field he was throwing it 35 on time and then letting Jalen Noel run or letting mm -hmm. Daniel Jackson run or RPO get the ball to a person for a 18 yard gain. It was a lot of in rhythm, efficient passing game all over the field. Are they going to play a defense that, that leans towards stopping that? Or are they going to say, we bet, yeah, you did that against Oklahoma state, but you're not going to do that against us. We're going to play you like we would have played you the, for the first three weeks. So I'm interested in seeing what the matchup is between the coordinators because Venables is, as smart of a defensive coach as has ever existed in the history of college football and what Iowa State is going to do to match that. That's the big match that I'm really interested in, really interested and excited to see. Yeah, I got a lot of confidence in our defense. Always have, always will. Haycock, Haycock, how he adjusts, how he, you know, goes out there and he has a game plan for everything. I think Coach Shieldhouse, I think he showed some stuff this last week and I think you're spot on there. I think it'll be interesting to see how Oklahoma comes out defensively to to try to combat uh, Coach Wheelhouse here. What's the key to winning that coordinator battle? Uh, the offensive coordinator versus <laughs> Venables? Yeah. Um, it's uh, flexibility in what you are calling to what they are doing. Because, like I said, every defense has a vulnerability. You also then have to recognize, am I enabling myself to take advantage of those things? So, like to use the Oklahoma State game as an example. You got a safety at seven and a half yards and he's triggering right downhill. The vulnerability is right behind it where he was. The Iowa State, after a couple drives, started taking advantage of that, which then throws the whole defense out the window because you're able to finally like pressure point that defense until it cracks. So 
Venables is going to come out with some st with stuff, something that you have not seen before, that you're not sure what it is because you've never game planned for a team game planning for you throwing the ball. You don't know what they're going to do. So once they actually do that, and you can say, hey, they're playing press on the outside, or and now they're making sure that they play their linebackers in space, and they're playing the safeties to play in you know, hook, curl, or what, I, I don't know. And then you go, all right, where are they vulnerable? Let's shake up what we're doing to access those points where they're vulnerable. So how, what's the secret to winning that matchup is it's flexibility and then a quick understanding of being able to, uh, what are they doing? How do we How do we get it done? And then communicating that to the guys to say, you know, hey, Colin, they're running this, that backside linebacker, he's going to try and shimmy through the backside A-gap really hard if we run, if he sees run away. He's a frontside A-gap player, but they're playing it backside because they, they, they think they can get a run through. What do you do with that information? How do you make sure that you're like, talk to your left guard. You got to hang out longer. You're probably going to have to take this backside backer. We change the ID, something. What is the mechanism that you're going to change to access the defense's weak point, be able to adjust with it? Yeah, I think uh, winning the turnover battle, number one, and eliminate big plays, you know, whether that be on special teams, whether that be on offense or defense, um, being in control, make it a, you know, as, a, as essentially a boring game as possible and um, don't let those guys get up and down because, I mean, they have a lot of playmakers over there. So does our defense. So does our, you know, we saw Daniel Jackson have some big plays here. So um, capitalize on those situations, play situational football. We got a great punter, um, you know, can't go broke taking a profit. You know, do what you got to do and, and make this a game where um, we're able to go out there and we're able to control the pace of the game a little bit. And um, hopefully Rocco can continue to continue to do what he does. And then this run game can continue to uh, flourish with the with some pressure on the passing. All right. Aiden's got to get out of here. Got a big Taylor Swift test to study for, I think. Let's name a random college football player before we go out, though. Samaji oh, P. Geez. Ryan. That's not a random. What do you mean? Samaji P. Ryan. He's still in the league, man. Former He's a college. Player. It's an old college player. Old. That was he played after yeah. I did. He doesn't play college football anymore. That means God. older. See, a good example like would be in the like past. Jeff Woody. Remember that guy who played for Iowa State? That's exactly <laughs> that one dude the mediocre, a little bit better. I mean, like, we played, no, no disrespect, that, that but that it's count? guys like people who aren't still in the league, right? Oh, Aiden, get you don't, Johnny Manziel. Are you gatekeeping? That's, that's not a bad one. I mean, <laughs> are you gatekeeping well how we but, play the name a random athlete game? No, it just makes more sense. That's if such it's... a Taylor Swift fan thing to do. Why are you just making stuff up? Such no, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make that insult doesn't land. There's there's no correlation between what Aiden said and calling him a Taylor Swift fan. Other I know. Than the fact I that just Aiden wanted to call him a Taylor Swift fan. Like it's a bad thing. I didn't say him well, and the rest of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Take shots, man. It's yeah, I, no. I wouldn't say I'm like it the is biggest impressive. Taylor Swift fan, but gotta respect it. I just still don't know how you guys don't know the name a random athlete game. I did it, it. Johnny Manziel. Yeah. That it, it kind of counts. I feel like he's a little too high profile. Though. He's out of the NFL. Yeah, so you think Johnny Manziel is more random than Samaji Pirine? Is that the debate we're ending on here? Uh, I think. I think. And Jeff Woody names himself. <laughs> <laughs> no, Aiden, Aiden named me. I was trying to go back to like the th like. I mean, oh, there's that was Arthur, your thinking Arthur, face. That was. I mean, just guys that you played against. Arthur Brown. Uh, Tom Wart was a linebacker for oh. Oklahoma. How about that? I like that one, yeah. It's Guys that you just know Aaron. from playing, because I'm old enough now where that actually counts. Sean That's Oakman. Fun. Big dude. You played him. Massive human. One. Massive human. It is impossible to block that dude uh, if he knew where he was going. If he did, you, you could confuse him, but if he knew where he was going, <laughs> impossible to block. Six, every bit of 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, Built like a tank, but was often in the wrong spot. Fun fact. This has been Football and Random Things. Thanks for listening.